Uh, okay, 406, queue reconstruction by height. Suppose you have a random list of people standing in a queue. Each person is described by a pair of integers, h, k, h, comma, k, where h is the height of the person and k is the number of people in front of this person who have a height greater than or equal to h. Uh, write, uh, write an algorithm to reconstruct the queue. Uh, the number of people is less than 1,100. Uh, why not going to reconstruct the queue? Okay, what, what does that mean? So you just, I guess she's just a person then? Okay. Um, okay, so 7 zero. Let me try to, I mean, I read the problem, now let me try to kind of parse it in my head. Uh, so 7 is the height of this person, and there's several people in front of this person who is taller than them. Okay. Uh, I mean, it sounds like a tree problem. But, uh, okay, so I'm going to try to do a little of by hand right here. Uh, okay, let's say we start at 7, 0, uh, 4, 4. Well, it's like so it's somewhere here, say. Well, you know it's after the 7 person. Uh, and then the 7, 1. So is it equal or greater? Okay, so then you know that the 7, maybe it's sorting, I don't know. Hmm. But it'll be like tree like sorting even. But mm, I would say maybe that's a, a premature optimization. Maybe I take it back a little bit because n is uh, 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 less than a thousand. So you could get away with something n squared. So maybe that maybe there's some bubble sorting thing. Hmm. Like we could do some n squared sort to kind of uh, make sure that everything's all right. It's, can we do a bubble saw? Does that even make sense? Hmm. Because we have okay. So let's say we have this, but uh Okay, I think you can add um, uh, I mean, I I think th I would think about actually now think about this as a graph problem first, um, maybe. Because uh, I, 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 what I'm thinking right now is that uh, we could start by some sort of weird induction thing, uh, so there will always be. A person where um, where uh, the number of people in front of this person whose height is greater than or equal to zero is zero, right? So that's just I think by definition. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't think it maybe not induction, but let's let's just say that's how I would start. So first, I would maybe uh, take the you know. Take the zero stuff on front. Uh, I mean, this is not, no. So maybe these are my candidates of people in the front. Uh, and then clearly, this is not good. So, so then you do something like that. Does that? I mean, okay, but is that good enough? Uh, hmm. So, hmm. I think I could. So, I'm still thinking about something that's uh, a little bubble sorty. Uh, in that uh, you just keep on doing iterations, but I think my, my question is whether um, uh, whether um, uh, uh, whether that terminates, right? Uh, like, get, do you get it? Is it possible to get an infinite loop? I guess n not. And it, I think the other thing is. Uh, is still an absolute uh, ordering, right? And what that means is that, uh, which is kind of
kind of needed for soy, which means that uh, uh, um, is there any intermediate states where uh, uh, you know a if a is big, person a is taller than b and b is taller than c, is there a way in which we accidentally where this is true, like in intermediate states? Uh, my my uh, intuition say no, but um, I haven't. Uh, hmm. I guess I have, you know still need to kind of prove to myself a little bit. Uh, I think what I would do is actually. I mean, I think. I mean, okay. Does it matter which way we sort it first? Like let's say we sort by just the uh, the height first, right? Height order. So then you have. For four and then and then five zero five two. Maybe I don't use commas all the place. Um, six one seven zero seven one. Right. Um, is this enough to bubble sort? Like, like the first iteration then. Uh, which way does bubble sort go? I always forget. No, but um, first iteration go like this, and actually, well, the five of two. I mean, th this is the thing where, um, well, no, you know that this will be. But I think what I'm trying to figure out is that, like, well, in this loop where, uh, uh, I'll think about it anyway. I have this loop, uh, on this loop where we do the swap, uh, is that always going to be true? Like, is there a, a, a scenario in the future where we actually swap back? And I don't, I'm not convinced that we could do that. I don't know, maybe we we could prove that we can, but um, hmm. an interesting problem. Right, but let's say we saw it the other way, because I think the, the other way is clearly more of an invariant, is that we sort by the zeros. Oh, hmm. Is that sufficient? Because okay, let's say we uh. It's almost like um, what you would call it, a uh, topological sort, maybe. Would that be weird? Because then first you take out the zero, the zeros, um, but then now what's what's in the rest of the way? Well, you have five two, which we can actually reduce to f five zero now. Uh, you have six one. Which you could also reduce to six zero. Yeah. Um, I'm also trying to figure out like a maybe a, a graph uh, explanation much clearer. Uh, this was four two and then seven one just goes seven zero. But then using my induction logic, you would probably move 5, 0, and then 6, 0, and then... No, maybe, maybe not, because then after these two, then this would become 4, 0. Hmm. I think maybe we have a uh, beginning of an algorithm, but I'm still trying to figure out... Uh, well, I'm still trying to prove to myself a little bit, I guess. Um, I guess what I'm also a little unclear with is... Okay, seven, seven zero and four four. Right, just looking at these two numbers by themselves, is it clear that uh, four four is after seven zero? I don't think so. Right, actually, because it it depends on the nature. Because uh, if you have four zero, oh four one, four two, four three. Then actually, in, if, if these are your inputs, these six elements, then 
then um, yeah, if these are your six elements, then actually the four four will go before the seven zero, right? Uh, so I don't think there's an absolute ordering uh, based on these things, but I think uh, what we said earlier, I mean, it, it's not actually a topological sort, but it's something, but, but I think the algorithm is something similar to a uh, topological sort. Um, no, I mean, uh, yeah, so bubble, sh oh, sorry, I, I said bubble, but purple sheep uh, has a question about why do I think about bubble sort or topological sort? And when are these techniques used for? Um, so I think to me this seems like a sorting problem in, in naturally, but I think actually maybe I'm, I mean, in, in some way it's true, but I don't think it's a default. Uh, uh, I, I think in, in, I'm just trying to go through like maybe all the tools in my tool set, and some of it is that knowing that, hey, look, uh, you have uh, this list of uh, 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 this list of items. And in some implicit way, th there is a, uh, an ordering that uh, uh, is defined by uh, this list of inputs, and thus the output will determine on how you kind of, I mean, like, that, that's, I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be sorting, but like, uh, and, or like sorting in the traditional sense, uh, in the algorithmic sense, but there is like a, an ordering that you're trying to figure out, and I think that's uh, how you would do it, right? Um, but I think, yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah, uh, does that kind of answer your question? So, uh, and I, I was thinking about topological sort because I, my initial, my initial, my initial thought, uh, uh, is that, um, like, like what I was saying, where uh, okay, so you could reasonably figure out that like five zero has to be near the front and seven zero needs well. Maybe less so actually because of what we just said, but you need you know that the the item in front will ha have to be zero, right? Um, and if you think about graphs uh, and how if there is a, 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 a sort of a dependency, uh, then you can kind of uh, you know take the lowest item and then kind of figure out and then remove it and then uh, 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 define your ordering that way, right? Um, but and. I mean, and while there, I don't think there's an absolute uh, uh, ordering, uh, as we kind of showed here. Oh, I just I erased it, I guess. Like, as I showed here, if this is your input, uh, if these six elements are your input, uh, between these two inputs, there's no absolute ordering, right? Um, but I think uh, what we actually described earlier with kind of this decrementing thing, uh, almost like... Uh, uh, almost like solving subproblems, actually, because uh, I, I think another way to think about this now, um, now that maybe I, I have the foresight of thinking it through, like with you guys and gals, uh, uh, quickly, is that um, is that uh, uh, okay? We reconstruct the queue uh, with this set of inputs, right? Uh, uh, what is the who is uh, who is the first person on that list? Well, if you look at all this, I think it's actually kind of obvious where right? it's five zero. Uh, Okay, so you put the five zero person in front because if seven's well, because there are only two people, no one in front of them who is shorter than them, uh, and you can kind of uh, uh, go through the cases, uh, uh, the the two or three cases, right? One is, well, uh, the if there is another number that's in front of me and shorter than me, well, then it would also has no one in front of that person, so there'll be like, so it, for example, if five zero, the only number th that can possibly be in front of five zero is like, you know, one zero, two zero, three zero, and four zero, and you know, uh, maybe negative height, I don't think, I mean, it's not a real thing, but sometimes these problems get a little tricky, but, uh, so that's the thing, right, so you take it off, and then now you have, um, and now you have a sub-problem, right, of, well, uh, what, what are the numbers after that? Uh, well, the numbers after that is actually, uh, yeah, is that, you know, all these numbers, except for the numbers that are shorter than five will have one number decremented, right? So this, even though we output four three, because that's the identity of the person in this problem, but uh, but but in the sub problem, it'll be this with actually, and this is five, this is five one, and this is four three, right? Um, I think we kind of went over this a little bit here. 
Um, and then that way, well, now you have this sub-problem, right? Uh, of, okay, actually, maybe I'll just type it out. So this is your original problem. Uh, let's say your sub-problem, after taking out the 5, 0, is um, uh, 4, 3, because you know that this 1%. So this is your sub-problem, right? Well, who's the person in front now? Well, now it, it has to be 0 and 0. So, uh, because th no one else is, has a 0 people in front of them. Uh, so now you kind of decrement it, and I kind of showed it here. But now your sub-problem is just all this stuff. Uh, uh, except for they all, you know, you do the sub problem where there's one total person in front. And then now the, it's, the next number is 5, 0, and then 6, 0, then 7, 0, and then, uh oh, oh, actually I said that wrong. After 5, 0, and then 6, 0, and we actually have this here, uh, then you have actually 4, or 0, and then, and then 7, 0, right? Uh, and then now, 4, 0 gets to go first, and then 7, 0. And that kind of actually matches up with the output. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to try to implement. Uh, and obviously, you have to keep do some keeping track of stuff, but uh, I think it's OK. And now, uh, normally, I would I'm trying to so there maybe there's a way you could do it with a heap, uh, the way that we could talk about. But there's a lot of decrementing and kind of reheaping anyway. So um, so we could probably just do it with um, so I would just do it with n square algorithm, especially when n is a thousand, uh, and not worry about it. All right, I'm gonna do that real quick. Um, but okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hope that's satisfactory. Uh, if not, ask another question, and then I could maybe, uh, uh, yeah, and then we'll go over it. Uh, in one way or the other. Um, okay. Maybe I'll construct an auxiliary thing. Um, naming, is, naming is the hardest part about this, but uh, I, f I suck at naming. Okay, whatever. They're just called people. Oops, that's uh, actually, well, no, I don't want this. Oops. I don't mean, okay, actually, I want this, not that. Okay. Um, what, what am I planning? Okay. Uh, okay. Hmm, I just put it out just in case. Mm, okay, that is what I want. Also, presumably, the input is good, otherwise, I would get into an infinite loop. Uh, but, okay. Mm. Okay, fine. Is it too 
that so to reload that we forget it. No. Oh, no dots. That's right. Uh If the second element is the people on front, okay. Is the second one is. Is it like a there's a pop right? Uh, I just forget. What. Uh, yeah, maybe I should use a name tuple, but oh, I don't decrement, so that might actually not fly. Oh, is that true? Is it a pen? Oops. Uh, okay. Now, now you want to get the P one for it. Well, but only if it's shorter or equal to height. Is or equal to person. Okay. Nope, that's not the height. Yeah, that's why using a name tuple would be a slightly better. Ooh. This is up. Yeah, I, <laughs> thanks, uh, Weaver KS. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I always forget. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's my one uh, <laughs> annoying thing about it. But uh, whoops. <laughs> uh, now what am I doing? Uh, when is person a Q? I mean, person a. Oh, that's man. I've been using. Why was I using one index? Oh man, my this should not be one index at all. That's why I've been confusing myself a little bit, and this is too. Uh, now there may be some other typos, but. Wait, really? Hmm, okay, I guess that's fair. Um, yeah. uh, Oops. Oh. Do I not pop the right thing? Why is 5 0 showing up all the time? Hmm. Well, well, well. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Well, at least it's returned the right things, but kind of. Well, right number of things. Hmm. 
Oh, well, oh, maybe I got this sign wrong. But... No, that's not right. What is my but then Oh I'm a I treat this like a queue so I popped out the front but actually what I need to do is to remove uh oops one button I need to remove front no, okay uh oh man oh Okay, that, that went okay, minus a lot of language e dumbness from me. Uh, yeah, okay, I mean, I think that that's satisfactory enough for me. I think the other, I want to just test out this case. Uh, a lot of weird time, how, how do I resize this? Okay, maybe I don't know how to resize anything. Okay, whatever. I'll type faster. Maybe that's not true, actually. Yeah, okay. I'm going to submit. Okay, cool. Uh, ooh, slow. <laughs> uh, probably too many removing and playing around with. Yeah, I'm I'm lazy. It's fine. Uh, cool. Um, yeah. So I think wow, this is a kind of a cute, interesting problem. I guess that's why it's thumbs up. I actually do dig it. I think this require. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit novel to me, uh, which is always kind of at least for me, kind of nice. Uh, I think it. Uh, as an interviewee, I think, yeah, like it's a cute farm, it's a nice farm, it's a neat farm, and more particularly good for me because I solved it. <laughs> but, uh, but no, uh, I think it, um, you know, uh, there no kind of tricky al algorithms required. Uh, I think it's just, uh, in a way, it's almost like a, like a weird selection sort, right? Uh, where, um, where, where every iteration, I mean, I kind of, well, this really actually, but you could also actually kind of treat this as a selection sort um, with some tricky nuances because you're just getting the min every time, right? Uh, and that's an n square thing, and I'm sure if you didn't, and with that in mind, you could actually uh, 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 you know do stuff right in the in place because with selection sort, you can do things in place, and with that, you probably do more uh, uh, more performant kind of uh, an algorithm. Um, uh, but that's like constant time improvement, right? Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I think it's okay. Maybe it's, I think it's a little bit on the harder side of, uh, as an interviewer uh, for me that I would like. Maybe I think the tricky. I think one thing I'm trying to see if uh, uh, <laughs> thanks, Weaver. Uh, I think one thing that I'm trying to figure out if um, if I like this as an interviewer is that whether like the trick is uh, uh, kind of like. Like the, whether the insight is something that you can work your way toward without. Uh, uh, so there's a couple of steps to that. One is like, well, can you work your way to, like, can, uh, uh, to the end of the problem if you didn't succeed immediately in the beginning? Uh, and then another step I would think about is, well, as an interviewer, uh, if I see that you get stuck, uh, is there, um, like, can, can I help you in a way that, you know, nudges you toward the solution without giving you the major thing, right? Because th there are definitely a lot of problems where, um, 
where it's binary in the sense that like if I give you that one hint, well, you know, everything is just typing and you already know the answer. Uh, but before that hint is impossible, right? And there's definitely some problems like that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out for this problem uh, whether this is the case. Um, I think there's some stuff that... Uh, mm, not sure. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Maybe I, I have to... Uh, I'll kind of go through the tapes again on this one. Uh, but I think I like it as a person uh, who likes solving problems. I think it's interesting, and I think uh, I think there is some like sorting fundamentals that maybe help there here. I think also uh, uh, we. I mean, I did this a little bit later, so it didn't help me solve it, or help me convince myself a little bit and clarifying it. Is that um, it? it it kind of uh, builds off the things that you may learn in dynamic programming, where uh, you break it down to uh, subproblems. Uh, in this case, there's only one subproblem, uh, um, but or uh, one direct child that one direct child subproblem, if you will. I forget the terminologies because uh, you know it goes kind of. You could think about it as also going recursively, and you could probably you can actually essentially do some kind of tail recursion on this actually, right? So it's it's not um uh, impossible. Uh though I mean, you know, there's some stuff about allocating memory on the stack and stuff like that, but we won't get into that I guess. Uh yeah, so I think it uses a lot of muscles that uh, uh but but by itself I don't know if like for me if someone doesn't get it, like do I think you know, he or she doesn't get it because of the, the dying program portion, or is it the sorting? I don't know. Uh, and it's hard to kind of give a hint that way. So I think that one is a tough thing to tr uh, to kind of really uh, give uh, uh, an interview on. But but that said, once you kind of figure it out and you kind of convince yourself and you prove or whatever, uh, I mean, I did this on 20 lines of, lines of code, so I think this is pretty straightforward typing. Uh, and you said, you know, if you don't... <laughs> mistype on the indexes and stuff like that. But uh, 